Hi everyone and welcome to Jean's Wild About Art. So today's painting is of a zebra and I'm going to be using my core watercolours. So I start by, I've drawn the outline in um, and I use burnt sienna in the eyes and around the nose. I really love burnt sienna on animal fur. It's a lovely warm base colour um, and it, yeah, I use it on most of my animals. Uh, burnt sienna, raw sienna, uh, burnt umber, they're my favourite sort of go-to animal sort of warm fur colours. So now for this zebra, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Grey. I don't usually use a lot of Payne's Grey in my wildlife art, but today I thought I'd give it a go because I really like um, this core but Payne's Grey. So I thought I'd give it a try on this painting and just see how it turns out. So I start by adding a very thin layer of Payne's Grey following the shape of the stripes and around the zebra's face. And you'll see the shapes of the, the stripes, they're all different. They're all varied a little bit, like around her cheeks, they, they are around a shape, so they create that effect of the shape of her face. Um, they're straight down the front of her face because the front of her face is straight and flat. Um, around her neck, they're sort of rounded where the neck goes underneath. So it just gives you the effect of uh, perspective, I suppose you'd say. It gives you the perspective of the zebra looking directly at us. And it helps to give the zebra some shape, some real form. So I've done the first layer and now I'll start to build up a little bit uh, stronger layers. So there's probably four or so layers on this zebra. Um, I'm adding some uh, burnt sienna into the ears and I'm leaving jagged lines around the edges because there's white fur and I'm using the white paper as the white of the fur. So now I'm going a slightly stronger mix of Payne's Grey and I'm going back over the stripes not completely I will leave lighter areas and darker areas like I'm going anywhere that there's darker shadows I create darker stripes so but I don't completely darken the whole stripe so it's not one solid flat color you'll see I missed a bit on that one and I did that deliberately just because there's a little bit of light hitting there so I leave that lighter and anywhere that's darker I go darker now I start to add some more Payne's Grey. Add a little bit of Burn Umber to it now just to add a bit of warmth to it. And I go around the trim of his ears, start to add a little bit more fur texture in. And for the fur texture, I literally just leave little gaps and that creates the effect of, of the fur. Because they got quite woolly in their ears and that protects any dust from getting in. It stops any dirt and bugs and things getting in their ears. That's why they have furry in their ears. So now I work on his pupil and I add Payne's Grey and I've added a little bit of blue to that just for the pupil. And then I add a bit of pure, like strong burnt sienna, so no, not much water, just to the edges of his eyes, just to give them a bit of three-dimensional effect. And now I go back to working on the zebra's face and I go down onto his nose and I add a stronger mixture of, of burnt sienna and I just add that around on their muzzle and under the nostrils and I go slightly thicker in different areas just to create again the three-dimensional effect and a bit more fur around the edges a bit and I add a bit of cooler grey on the tip of the nose because he's got he's been muzzling his nose around in the dust so he's got a bit of dirt on his nose so I popped a little bit of grey on the front of his nose there so now I add into the pure white areas I add a little wash of very 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 diluted burnt sienna but just because, you know, he's been rolling around in the dirt. He's got a little bit of dirt on him. So I've added some not quite white paper down under his neck and in certain areas. Now I go back in again with the Payne's Grey and I start to darken up another layer. And I keep building up like dark layers and layers, getting darker and darker. I add some more fur texture into the mane to create the effect of fur. I darken up directly underneath and around the back of the neck and I make sure to darken up the areas that that are the darkest so I go around the back of his neck and I darken up these stripes are very much darker and they're much darker under his chin and around the edges the bottom edges of his ears and into the depths of his ears I darken up the shadows in his nostrils and now I add a little bit of the definition onto his muzzle. He's got little tiny whisker dots and he's got little wrinkles where he sort of scrunches up his face when he's when he's chewing and things. And then I go back on with the Payne's Grey. And I've still, again, I've added a little bit of burn umber to it just to, just to give it a little bit of warmth. 
and you can barely tell but when you look at it when I look at it on the paper I can see it a little bit and I start to build up another layer in the darker areas on this zebra and it just yeah really does help to to make him look more alive and more interesting because you can see all the different layers I like to see that with watercolor you see all the the different layers and the work that's gone into it so now for the shadows uh under his chin and around his neck I'm adding a I'm adding uh, ultramarine blue very very diluted just to create a cool shadow sort of tone and anywhere that I can see shadows I add that and I darken up a bit of burn umber around the edges of the nose and onto the wrinkly areas I add a few more little dots for his for his fur and I start to define um, more detail now I start to add more detail so for the background, I decided I wanted to go with a green. Um, so I just wet the paper and I drop in some sap green, just pure sap green, and I drop it onto the wet paper and I let it flow around. I help it a little bit by sort of dragging it around with the brush. But yeah, I thought he needed something for the background. So yeah, that's just pure sap green. And then I'll mix up a slightly darker green by adding, um, I add some, uh, what's it called? Some indigo I add a little bit of indigo to it just to darken up the sap green and it just creates a lovely color like that and I don't take that completely flat layer all over the whole thing I add a lot to the left and a bit to the bottom right and you'll see that as I go I start to darken up just a few areas not solidly over the whole painting so you'll see I start to get a bit paler coming across to the right hand side and I'll get darker down that bottom right side in just a second so while it's still wet, I'm working wet into wet. And I'm adding a few more shadows in. I realised I missed a couple of shadows under his neck, so I add those in. And we are just about done. I'm going to add a few more little bits. I wanted, decided I wanted to darken up this bottom right-hand side. So I add a slightly thicker consistency of the green and blue. And I pop that down into that bottom right-hand side. And I blend it out a little bit. So thank you for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd love it if you click like and subscribe and click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release a new video. And yeah, I had lots of fun painting this zebra. So I will see you all for my next video. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next video. Okie doke. Bye.